Welcome everybody, Two Side Acres. So uh, summer is officially here now and uh, we just got done with almost a month of hunting mushrooms, Merle mushrooms. Uh, check those videos out. We had a lot of fun out there, got a lot of mushrooms this year. Uh, now the, uh, the hard work begins around the homestead. Uh, usually our last frost here in northern Michigan is, uh, I think it's June 9th or June 16th. Uh, today is June 5th, and looking at the two-week forecast, uh, it's, it's looking the coldest it's going to get is the low to mid 40s, so we're good there. Um, when we first moved in here, uh, didn't really have a whole lot extra to spend on fencing material, so you can see behind me there, I just went around the woods here and collected, you know, two to four inch uh, dead trees, standing dead, and made fence posts, which surprisingly they've lasted over four years, but they're all starting to rot and falling over and we need to get them out and we want to expand the garden too. And the other problem we had was um, the only open space on the whole property uh, is the yard here. So we, you know, I dug up some of the yard, the lawn, but it happens to be on a slope, which makes it kind of difficult for water runoff. So we have to put our rows perpendicular to the slope of the, the yard. Um, and it would be easier to do that with the tractor, but I can't get the tractor in there because it's too narrow. And we also have a, a small irrigation run through there. So we're going to dig that up. We've already got the fence peeled off. I'm going to pull these posts up. Uh, and then <clears throat> after the garden's done, we got a whole bunch of wood to move. So it's a busy season up here, but I figured I'd show you the, the, the process of uh, breaking ground and then putting in our rows and all the uh, supplements we put in the ground as well. Uh, you know, we use the, the goat poop, I guess, you know, just straight up goat poop. It's, it's actually their bedding, hay, you know, and it works great. We've got the rabbits as well. We throw that in there and then I'll show you the process of actually uh, measuring the content, the nutrient content of the soil once it's all tilled up. So uh, enjoy, here we go. Now, if you don't have a tractor, there's a whole bunch of videos out showing how to do this with a, like a tire, or you could dig it out. Either way would work just fine. Um, but the tractor definitely makes it easier. Now, what's left of these posts, I'm gonna use as firewood. And it's really pretty impressive that these things lasted as long as they did. I've had uh, pressure treated lumber not last this long. I expected some of them to break off like that. It's no big deal. So I know it looks like I'm going through a lot of trouble right now to save myself from digging. And you're right. I just don't want to exert that much energy right now because it's going to be a long day. Every shovel load that comes out of here is almost like gravel. Some spots are worse than others. But you can see just one handful here, it's all rock. Got lucky on that one. Okay, I think that's it. Only 20 minutes in, already dripping. If you look right here, there's a pipe sticking out of the ground. It runs the whole length here, about a foot and a half down. Yay. But we want to expand the garden about 10 feet. About here. That way I can get in here with the tractor rather than just doing that, I don't know, 12 feet or so. I can till up a, you know, over 20 foot wide swath and more than double our garden capacity. All right, I know everybody doesn't want to watch us trench for the next hour, two, three hours, whatever it takes. We'll come back when that part's done and we're uh, getting ready to uh, plow, break ground. So I uh, started digging up that center section, got about 10, 15 minutes into it, and I'm starting to get all sweaty. And I realized I'm not a 25-year-old strapping, strapping lad anymore. I'm a 44-year-old man who's got real toys. So uh, got the tractor, put the bucket on it, dug the top, you know, foot, foot and a half off of it. 
And then it was just almost as easy as pulling it up. We did have to shovel another, I don't know, maybe four or five inches to, to break it loose. Uh, that and a cable locator just to kind of pinpoint where it was. And uh, yeah, just like that, it's done. So now it's mostly just tractor work to backfill. And then I'll put the, uh, the two point bottom or the three point bottom plow, two bottom plow on the tractor. I'll uh, break ground, you know, we'll mark out where we want to go, break ground, then go back in and dump all the stuff, you know, the, the uh, goat poop. And from there, I'll till it all under, um, put uh, triple 19 on it, and then we'll put the fence in. And I think since I got Mrs. H here, she can just hold the fence post in and I can just push down on it with the bucket rather than using the slide hammer. So making progress, it's only been about two hours, a little over two hours, but uh, sure beats doing all that work by hand. Right, so we keep our ash from the wood wood stove in the house that's this barrel and uh, i've already dumped ash from the wood boiler the outdoor wood boiler in the rest of the garden so now we got to throw a little down here it doesn't take a lot but we might as well use up what's left of it Needless to, stay, to say, stand up wind of this. Advice from Mrs. H, don't eat ash. I'm glad the wind picked up just now. I'd be all up in that ash. All right, now it's time to get our uh, poopy filled hay in here. I'll tell you what, out of all my implements, this is by far my favorite. I love the grapple. And as I've said in previous videos, putting the ash in the garden like this and I drive in the garden with a tractor is the exact reason why I will never burn pallets or dimensional lumber without going through and making sure there is no nails. Gonna go drop off this uh, grapple, put the bucket back on, clean up the edge here, and then till it. These dang chickens, if I were to let them go, go at it long enough, they'd probably till up the garden for me. One last pass just to make sure there's nothing in here that's gonna mess up the tiller. times this hay gets really matted down and you can see chunks after I go over with the tiller it takes a couple uh, a couple passes to really dice it up and spread it out All right, so here's where I take a shovel, do an assessment, look for any major rocks that I might have kicked up, which I see a bunch, and just try to split up these uh, matted up messes a little bit. It doesn't have to be too crazy. A pitchfork would be easier, but I just don't feel like going to get it. We have so many rocks here. I lived in Florida for well over 10 years. You had to go out and buy rocks. Move, birdie. 
And here come the chickens to get all the bugs. What's it worth to you? What's it worth to you? Normally it doesn't need this many passes, but I really want to mix this stuff in. Oh yeah, now we have guinea hens. <sighs> Rocks. I'm pretty sure they actually grow here. One thing I don't really uh, like about this tiller is that it's forward drive, which I have to have because of the rocks. If I had a, a rearward drive, it would uh, just absolutely kill itself because of the rocks. But because of that, it kicks everything back. And now I got this huge lump down here and a huge pit on the, on the far end. Scoop it up, take it down there and drop it off. All right, so quick update. Yesterday, I spent uh, the entire day working on a uh, better for the tractor. That way we didn't have to hoe all the rows. And holy crap, check it out right here. I'll put a little clip in here. This thing worked out absolutely amazing. I, I was actually really worried that it was just gonna drag a whole bunch of the hay along with it, but man, it put perfect rows in there. You can see there's still a bunch of rocks in there, but that's okay. We'll pick through those as we plant. Um, now we're gonna get this fence put up. And, you know, I know a lot of people don't worry about fencing it, but we have the chickens that we let free range and we have deer. The very first year we put a garden in, uh, before we even got the garden finished, we had a, a small cherry tree up there that we planted outside the garden. And after like two or three days, all the leaves are gone off it from the deer picking away at it. So we gotta fence it in. It sucks, but it is what it is. And uh, like I said earlier, you can see the old fence posts. I'm just, I'm just gonna add on to those. I'm not gonna bother taking those ones out. Uh, we'll just put a few extra T posts in. And uh, I do have a, a homemade slide hammer for the T posts, but uh, since we got two of us here, we're gonna try to just push them in the ground with the tractor rather than you know, slamming down on that thing. And it hurts my ears to tell you the truth. All right, made a pretty dumb mistake. Um, the fence needs to go on the ribbed side, and I was thinking that on the inside, but I wanted it to clip. Anyway, screwed it up. Fence now needs to go on the inside of the stake because these, uh, these clips are meant to go on the, the triangle side. So the T-post would be here, and then that grabs onto it like that, so. All right, so uh, that was a pretty rookie mistake. We just went and pulled and reset all of these fence stakes, uh, T-posts, except for the corners, um, because I don't feel like fighting with it. So this part goes pretty quick. Got a helper to kind of hold it, find a spot where the, the fence cross, the, the horizontal lines cross. Get your guy around there, your clip around it. And then you see how it comes around the edge. Then you just take your tool Put it on there and bend it up and that's all it takes and the same thing find a, a horizontal cross put it over around and i'm only doing two because i just don't think we need more than that and i kind of and i kind of plan on pulling this back down each spring so i can get in here with the tractor and do the same thing all right, so that's it. Uh, Project Garden Expansion and Hoe and Rose uh, 2023. Looks like we're done now. Uh, next, I'm gonna go ahead and get in there and uh, reel out some triple 19, throw some sprinklers on it and let it sit for a few days. And uh, we're, uh, today's Wednesday. We're supposed to get some rain on Saturday. Um, we'll get the seeds in the ground and then uh, we're gonna be buying a bunch of plants that are pre-grown, you know, just saplings or whatever they're called. Uh, that's all Mrs. H there. Uh, but I'll, next I'll do a video on doing my soil uh, sample tests uh, after I get the triple 19 in and watered down a little bit. 
Hey, well, thanks for watching everybody. I just hit over a thousand subscribers, so uh, thank you very much. And uh, don't forget, keep pulling on them bootstraps.